Like so many others out there, getting my sea glass nice and cleaned after picking it off the beach proved to be a very challenging task. When I first started out, I would use things like household dish soap, I would try soaking my sea glass in bleach, and I even tried using this over here, which is called CLR. Now, none of these products actually worked and got some of the deep-rooted dirt out of the sea glass. And to understand why that doesn't happen, we kind of have to understand the sea glass itself. See, the frosty patina that's on the outside over here is what we refer to as the hydration process. Now, the hydration process is the actual etching of elements from the original glass composition out of the sea glass, which gives it that unique frosty patina. So it's the high alkaline and acidic levels of the ocean and the salt water, and it removes some of the original silicas and sodium and whatever else was used in the sea glass or sorry, the actual real glass. I tried absolutely everything to get my sea glass nice and clean. I even tried scrubbing it with a toothbrush. I would try using a bottle brush and I would even try and use a little toothpick to try and clean some of the little crevices out and none of them worked. And then one day, luckily for me, a beachcomber shared a very secret product with me that I'm about to share with you today. Here it is, everybody. There's the secret product that I use to get my sea glass nice and gleaming white. It's called Iron Out. It's available in Sobeys where I live, and I've seen that it's available online. I believe Sobeys is called Loblaws in other parts of the country. Anyways, this one over here is a powder form, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. And then this one over here is a liquid spray form. I don't find it's as effective, but sometimes when I have some really hard to clean sea glass, I'll use them both. So I've already got a quarter pound of sea glass that I've weighed out from Tablehead Beach. Let's go into the kitchen and get it cleaned. So here we have it, everybody. Here's a quarter pound of sea glass that we picked out on table head. Now you can see that there's a lot of dirt that's inside of the cavities of the sea glass that I haven't been able to get cleaned with a little bit of a rinsing under water in soap. So if this stuff was really, really giving me troubles, I would treat it with the stain remover over here that's in the spray first. So what we're gonna do, everybody, is we're gonna take this quarter pound of sea glass and we're gonna put it into the bowl that's in the sink right over here. I find it's good to get the sea glass nice and hot before we treat it with the iron out. And it is imperative that we use very hot water as well. What this kind of does is it opens up the little bits of crevices and cracks that's inside, which is more welcoming to the iron out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our iron out that's open and then we put a little bit in and then you're gonna see the process, the bubbling. And then we kind of mix it around. You know, if we feel that it really didn't take, we can add a little bit more. You can really hear that. That definitely means that it's working. Like most cleaning products, this is actually very noxious on the lungs and it can actually hurt you. It's always recommended that you use this in an open window that's nicely ventilated. What I like to do is after I put it in and you see that chemical reaction happening, I hold my breath, I run into the other room, and then I wait a minute and let it settle. Okay, everybody, so it's gonna be time to rinse this off and we're gonna dry it out on the towel and then take a look at the difference that that little bit of iron out made on that dirty old sea glass. So what I like to do is I like to turn it onto like a lukewarm water. I get the initial little bit of water out that has the iron out and the chemicals in it out and then I'll give it a little bit of a scrubbing with my hand. As I get the sea glass out of the bowl, I also wanted to mention that I use this bowl specifically for a few reasons. Number one, it's got a very high wall to it, so it really avoids splashing. Because if you get the iron out or the water on your clothes, it's probably going to stain it. And on top of that, I like the fact that it's nice and flat on the bottom over here, as opposed to a bowl where all of the chemical will just go right to the bottom and not all of the sea glass is going to get it evenly. So here we go. We're going to put it all here on the towel. We're gonna let it dry, and I'm gonna put it on the paper, and we're gonna take a look at it. It's really hard to believe that this is the exact same stuff that was all dirty and right in front of the camera a few moments ago, but it absolutely is. You can see that the sea glass, especially the clears, are extremely bright. The greens are as well. I have to say, as good as the iron out works, it doesn't do 100% of the pieces. You can probably see like right over here inside of the cavity, there's a little bit of dirt that's inside. And I specifically set aside these six pieces right over here 
that didn't get cleaned. Now normally after I treat it, I have a container and I'll set the, all this sea glass aside and then I'll soak it with this stuff over here, the iron out spray, and then I'll give it a second treatment. And sometimes that actually doesn't even work. Luckily, I have one more trick I'm gonna share with you because I've been experimenting this past month with something very new. Creative expression should have no limits and no boundaries. Out where I live, people discarded their rubbish absolutely everywhere. It's impossible to look down on the ground where there's dirt and not find broken glass. So for years and years, I'd been collecting all of this broken glass, and lately, I found a way to incorporate it into my artwork that's so beautiful, and I hope to share with you at a later date. But the problem was, is that the rough edges, the sharp edges on it was just a little bit too much for my artwork. So I went out and I purchased a rock tumbler off Amazon. It's brand new and I'm really excited because I've done a little bit of experimenting with it and it really cleans up the sea glass that I can't get cleaned. See my friend over here, a few years ago, he took a whole bunch of his sea glass, we're talking like 50, 70 pounds of sea glass, and he put it around all of his trees, in his flower beds, and in his garden. There it sat for multiple years, and that's where all of the dirt entered all the cavities that's caused by the hydration process, which my chemicals are unable to clean. Scrubbing it is unable to clean. Nothing was working. Then I took the few of these pieces, and I put them on a lowest setting in a rock tumbler for only six hours. And you're going to see pieces like this one over here that have this huge iron staining on it that the iron out doesn't get out. Even though it's called iron out, it doesn't work on this. This is going to disappear in a very short time. So we're going to take these pieces of glass that I have set over here, we're going to put them in the tumbler, and we're going to see what six hours difference makes. Here's what the sea glass looks like before we put it inside the barrel here, everybody. You can see that it's got iron staining and it's got some deep pitted dirt all over it. You can see right over here, deep pitted dirt. And what's going to happen now, as I had just said, we're going to take all of this sea glass over here that's extremely dirty and we're going to put it in for about six hours. And lo and behold, I'm going to assume that most of it is going to be nice and clean. I want to pay extra special attention to the melt glass pieces over here that you can see there's iron on and these pieces over here. Now that I'm looking everybody, it doesn't look like there's going to be enough in this barrel. So luckily for me, I've got about 50 pounds of this sea glass. I'm going to have to go get some more pieces and we're going to fill this barrel up. I wasn't kidding when I said I have a lot of this sea glass. This is a large flower pot. And I have a second one that's actually larger than this one over here in the other room. So we're going to pick out a few more pieces that are extremely dirty and we're going to throw them in. And then on top of that, what I'm going to add to it, I'm not going to add a grit that you buy in a store because I'm a very, very minimalistic individual, to put it lightly. It was a lot for me just to get this rock tumbler. So we're going to put a little bit in over here. Maybe get that big rock out, a few of the larger rocks. Now we're going to add a few more pieces of sea glass over here. Let's add these ones right over here. We're supposed to go um, two thirds to three quarters full, and we're definitely not there yet. Let's add this little handful right over here, and then that's gonna take us to two thirds to three quarters full. So the next step is we're gonna fill this with water just so that the pieces are underwater and lightly submerged. And that's pretty much it right over here. Maybe I'll take a little bit out, okay. Now we're going to fill a little bit more of the little gaps over here with a few more of those rocks and pebbles. Shake it all down. Now we're going to close the lid and we're going to get this puppy moving. The lid is nice and flush to the edges over here. So the next step is to put the metal cap on it, screw it in and then get it going. So here's the rock tumbler that I purchased everybody. It was off of Amazon. It was about $130. And like I said, I've invented a new form of art that doesn't have to use sea glass to be beautiful. So all of the broken glass, I'm going to pick it up out of the ground and I'm going to repurpose it and turn it into something beautiful. We've got the cap and it's screwed on nice and tight. So we're going to put this on and then we're going to go like this. We have the days right over here. We're not even going to be doing it for one day. And the speed, we have it on the minimal speed. It only goes up to three. Now in six hours, we're going to come back over here. We're going to check it out and we're going to see what all of the sea glass looks like. Now, I'm not sure if you're watching one of my videos for the first time because you really want to learn how to clean sea glass, or if you're a longtime fan, you know that I'm quite the sea glass purist. I am so much against 
throwing glass into the beaches to find it on a later day, which is also littering and illegal. And I'm extremely against people every time I see someone that uses a rock tumbler and they tumble glass and then they pass it off as sea glass. Okay, everyone, so it's been exactly six hours and I'm excited to see what the sea glass is gonna look like. I don't wanna over tumble it because I wanted to keep the actual natural sea glass frosting that we're used to seeing and I don't want it to look like it's all satiny smooth slick and made in a rock tumbler because after all this is all natural sea glass it's just a little dirty and I need to clean it so you can see that I got the lid off and right away there's a whole bunch of rocks that are sitting on the top and it's mixed up with all of the sea glass but right away I'm excited. It looks like it's pretty clean. Just by scooping the sea glass off of the top, it's gonna keep most of the smaller little pebbles inside of the barrel. And then we're gonna be able to take this sea glass right over here, spread it out on the towel, and get a first-hand look for how well it cleaned. So now that the pieces have dried out, I am really impressed with how well the tumbler was able to clean them and still keep that frosty sea glass look that's caused by the ocean. You know, we can see that there is a little bit of dirt in a few of the pieces over here, and some of them probably are gonna need to go back in for a couple of hours, like there's a little bit of iron over here. But right away, these are the two pieces of melt glass, and there is no iron staining on it anymore. This is the shard right over here that I was using when I was talking about sea glass and the hydration process. This piece was absolutely disgusting and filthy, and right now you can see it still has the frostiness, that hydration process, but it doesn't have all of the dirt that was in it. You know, it probably took the ocean decade after decade to make this piece smooth down and give it this frosty patina. So I am so glad that the rock tumbler did not take any of that away from it. Overall, I am just so impressed with what it looks like here. All of my sea glass is seemingly saved. I tried so many products over so many years to clean it, and lo and behold, it only took six hours in a rock tumbler and it cleaned all of these pieces and to think I probably have about 50 pounds of it in my back room and I was so sad with it I didn't know what to do I'd even considered throwing it back in the ocean so the ocean could clean it now I don't have to I can just clean it nice and gently and still use it and keep that beautiful natural sea glass look Thanks so much for watching my video, everybody. I hope that these tips are insightful and they really help you clean your collection of sea glass because it's such a treat to go out there and hunt it. And sometimes we find these amazing pieces and they're just too dirty to do anything with. Please give this video a like and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my tips and my awesome adventures. Hopefully we're on the beach again sometime real soon. I can't wait.